is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and hey, we're back to laptops again after a whole lot of iPhone and Galaxy content recently. This is the Lenovo ThinkPad Yoga 370. It's not X series, it's not T series, it's that just ThinkPad Yoga series. It all started with the 12 inch ThinkPad Yoga, that was all it was called, years ago. Then it split into two lines with a 12 inch and a 14 inch model. So we had the Yoga 260, the Yoga 460. Well, now Lenovo has simplified because apparently people said the 12 inch was a little too small, the 14 inch was a little too big. So we have a 13.3 inch Yoga. 370 here. And I like what they've done with it. It's gotten thinner and it's gotten lighter. It used to be the ThinkPad Yoga was the kind of less expensive one, the one you could find at Best Buy for $9.99. And as a result, it was a little on the chunky side, you know. This one is very thin, very light. It's clearly a close cousin to the ThinkPad X1 Carbon that's even more expensive. Uh, the bad news, this one has gotten a little more expensive. Maybe if you shop around at CDW and, and other business-oriented retailers that carry this, you'll find it for less. But on Lenovo's website, it starts around $13.89, and it goes up from there. So not quite as affordable either. But there's a lot of goodies in here, including an active digitizer, Thunderbolt 3. And we're going to look at it now. So as you'd expect from a ThinkPad, it's available in matte black, but also it's available in silver too. If you prefer that look, I, I kind of like the matte black. I'm used to it. The usual combination of carbon fiber, aluminum subframe, metal, durable. You can't tell which surface is which because it's all coated in the same uniform matte black kind of thing. The back, I like the look here. This really does remind me of the X1 carbon. That's a nice look. And also, you know, the HP Spectre has been doing that kind of thing, the X360 sort of look. And this is a 360 degree yoga -ing, yoga ing laptop, as you might guess. No frou-frou watch band hinge here, but you get two very sturdy hinges that really resist bounce when you tap on it, which is a nice thing because this has a touch screen and also an active digitizer. Of course it does the tent mode, it does the presentation mode, and it has the retractable keyboard. So as we do that, the keys will lift and lock back out and go back in. So you can feel the keys are there and the trackpad, but they will lock in place once you yoga it out of the normal position. So you could use this as a tablet too, which is a nice thing because we have an active digitizer with the Wacom AES pen right here. Recharges when it's in the silos. Wacom AES uses rechargeable technology. You can also get a ThinkPad larger size pen if the glorified toothpick is too small for you and gives you a hand cramp like it does for me because I have one of those kind of long fingers and eventually you'll figure out which way is in. There we go. And there are third party pens. I have some right here. We have the Wacom Bamboo Ink that came out recently, the new trendy one that's around 70 bucks is in stores like Best Buy. That's a dual protocol pen. Does Wacom AES and Entrig, and this is an older just Wacom pen too. Now this is confusing because these all look alike, these pens, you know, they make ones for regular Wacom EMR, so you have to make sure it says AES on it, but there's a variety of pens, or you can just buy Lenovo's. The digitizer supports 2048 levels of pressure sensitivity, so it's not that new updated digitizer that we saw in the Yoga 720 15 inch that does 4,000 levels, but still, it's good enough that I was able to do the artwork that you can see on screen here, and that's in Adobe Photoshop. This has CS 2017, the latest edition. This has Intel Core i5 and i7 7th generation dual core 15 watt CPUs with Intel HD 620 graphics. There's no dedicated graphics option on this. It's good enough that most of the time, even using some large brushes, which I do when I start filling in the canvas initially, it didn't lag too much. There was a little bit of lag, but nothing that I would call out of the ordinary or unbearable for Photoshop. And when doing finer work, which is where you don't want any lag, it was absolutely fine. It's And for note taking, that's an easy task. If you're using OneNote or any other note taking application, it works well. There's a little control panel that, that's, that's pre-installed. That's the Wacom AES control panel. So you can assign the click function if you have a button, button on your pens, that sort of thing. And you can set the pressure curve on it as well, which is a pretty decent pressure curve. I, I have no qualms with it. It's not like using the best Wacom EMR for art or something like that, but like I said, it's enough to do nice things, very nice things. So ThinkPad displays are sometimes a little on the lackluster side. This one is actually pretty nice. It's an IPS display. My only complaint is, despite the fact that it's IPS, the off-angle viewing is not so awesome. If you go, you know, beyond, say, 50 degrees off-angle, which granted is kind of far, I suppose. It gives you privacy on the airplane, but other than that, yeah, one day. It's a glossy display. Again, it supports that active pen and it supports touch. That does have palm rejection, that display, uh, but like all AES and capacitive-based digitizers, well, active capacitive, it's okay with 
palm rejection, you know, if you're doing art, you saw I wear an artist's glove. For note taking, it's probably okay if you lift your hand up if you notice it's actually picking up your palm print. But you know, it works okay. Anyway, you can see the display metrics on screen and they're pretty good. Brightness is very nice there, they're just slight, ever so slightly above 300 nits. The color gamut is good on it as well. It calibrates well. That's the Delta E after calibration you'll see for the color accuracy on the screen. And the white point's pretty high, but hey, it's it's okay. It calibrates down pretty well, and I don't think this is something that your average fine artist is going to buy as their only means of doing art or something like that. And for note-taking, movie watching, all the normal things people do, it's great. Just like the horsepower inside is perfectly adequate everyday ultrabook for performance. Inside you have Intel 8265AC Wi-Fi, the usual stuff there. I love that this has Thunderbolt 3 on it that gives you versatility. So there's Le no Lenovo dock connector here because I figure they'll use Thunderbolt 3 instead. It's nice to have a USB port on each size and a full-size HDMI. Ethernet is via a dongle adapter, which I believe is supposed to be included in the box. We didn't get one though, but probably it should be in there, or otherwise you'd have to pay a little extra to get it. Of course, you can connect all matter of things to the Thunderbolt 3, which also does USB-C port. It comes with a typical Lenovo rectangular charger connector. You should be able to charge it via USB-C as well if you want, though. There's a micro SD card slot. They couldn't fit a full-size one in here, but I guess a lot of people are mostly using their phone at micro SD card these days more than anything else. And LTE is optional, and that takes a nano SIM if you go with that. So pricing wise, let's talk a little more. Like I said, it starts at about $1389, but that gives you a Core i5, which is fine. Only four gigs of DDR4 RAM and 128 gigs SATA SSD. This uses M2 SSDs. So if you want to go for that kind of more mainstream, slightly beefier configuration, eight gigs of RAM and a 256 gig PCIe NVMe SSD, which is what we have here, that's $1659. That's not cheap Cheetos. It is still less expensive than the ThinkPad X1 However, the Think ThinkPad X1 Yoga, that is, and, you know, hopefully you might find it a little bit cheaper somewhere. So this is still certainly an investment, and it's not as cheap as the ThinkPad Yogas of old. Like I said, they were carried by com com consumer retailers like Best Buy. It has a very compact charger. It's a 4-cell 51-watt-hour battery, and the battery that 51 watt hours is not bad. You usually see somewhere between 45 and up to 60 on a 13-inch Ultrabook, and battery life is thus okay. It's not super phenomenal. It's not terrible. I manage usually around seven hours on a charge with this, and that's what brightness set to 40% and Wi-Fi on an active. If you crank that brightness way up, well, your battery life's going to be shorter, and that's doing mostly productivity and drawing inside of Photoshop and doing some note-taking. If you're doing something more demanding, compiling lots of code, if you're doing video editing, that sort of thing, well, obviously, you're going to have shorter battery life. Well, it's a ThinkPad, so that means you get nice travel right here, about 1.5, 1.6 millimeters of travel, two stages of backlighting, as usual, with the FN and spacebar to turn that on and off. It's a fantastic typing experience. This is the keyboard for writers. It's nice. Tactile, damped, smile-shaped keys. Pretty stiff here, just the slightest bit of movement. You know, if you're a brute with typing, then you're still going to be okay. Of course, you have the track point eraser stick pointer here, and these buttons are dedicated to it. You've got your meta button in the middle and these two. And this is a Microsoft Precision trackpad. It's made by Elon, but it happens to be very good. And there's a few customizable settings that are available for it as well. But nice positive click, feels great, tracks wonderfully. It's a great experience as well. And, of course, the fingerprint scanner is right here for biometrics, and it has a DTPM inside trusted platform module, so you've got your biometric security. Okay, ThinkPads are, well, business-oriented laptops, which means they are openable and serviceable. Phillips head screws, nothing obscure going on here. The ones on the front edge are a little bit tight, and they're the ones that, when, once you unscrew it, it'll start to pop up there, and I use a handy-dandy guitar pick to pry my way around for the little plastic ears that stick out, so you pry, pry, pry it off from the front. There they are. These are captive screws, which means they're held in by little washers so they don't go anywhere. That's what the underside looks like. And the internals, there's our fan, there's the CPU under a heatsink, a RAM slot. Now the maximum they'll sell you is 16 gigs of RAM because, well, the biggest SO DIMM you can get memory module is 16 gigs. And under here is our M2 SSD. We have a 256 gig PCIe NVMe SSD in this M2 slot. Toshiba happens to make the one in our unit. 
Your Wi-Fi card is right here. If you had LTE, it would be in this socket right here. And even though we have the SIM card drawer right here, that's going to be on all of them. It's not connected to any antennas or anything like that. It's actually not active. Battery is over here, so if you needed to replace it somewhere down the road, you could open it up and pull that out. And this is where the pen lives. Here's a little silo right here, and this is the recharging point. You can see it. That's how it recharges this little stylus. So that's the Lenovo ThinkPad Yoga 370. Again, it is available now. I'm sure at some point it'll probably get refreshed with Intel 8th generation CPUs, currently 7th gen. The difference, not so much. Anyway, <laughs> it packs a lot of nice features into a really thin and light and durable package. I like it. No more chunky monkey thing going on here at all. It's, it's not cheap, you know, ThinkPads generally aren't, so there's the thing. But you've got a lot of versatility here, and Lenovo's doing some good things. By the way, for those of you who are watching this at actual publication time, I'm going to be heading to Japan for a week to cover the Lenovo ThinkPad 25th anniversary celebration and the new model there, so there'll be more Lenovo goodness. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos, and thumbs up if you like this vid.